What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Now today, we're going to take this stock T5 behind me and we're going to turn it in to my Pro Street upgrade. Now the Pro Street includes every upgrade available in the aftermarket into one gearbox. So it makes it the best, the most durable T5 that you can get. So without me talking all day, let's get right to it. So let me take a step back for a second. Now there is a company out there that makes a stronger 295 gear set than the Z-Spec gear set. But I just wanted to make this clear because I know some people are like, oh, well, I have that other gear set he's talking about and that's way better than the Pro Street. Now from my experience using their gear set, I haven't had much good luck. Most of the bearings don't fit properly on the shafts they're supposed to be a press fit and the bearings kind of just drop right on and you have to use this glue to glue the bearings on the shaft which honestly doesn't sit right with me and that's not something i can warrant you know if you're going to spend close to two grand just on a gear set the quality should be a hundred percent and that doesn't include the rebuild kit the upgraded counterplate, the bearing retainer, the bronze fork pads, and plus my labor to build the transmission. At that point, you might as well upgrade to a T56 or a TKX. Now that other gear set, those parts aren't always available. You could be waiting up to six months until you get your gear set. With my experience putting these kits together, I've ruled out all the bad parts, what to use, what not to use and they are all together in one kit that I call the Pro Street. This is something I can warrant. This is something I know is proven, and I know you will get a quality gearbox at the end of the day. That's what I mean when I say this is the best the T5 can get. So these parts are readily available. They're supported. Now, depending on a few variables, like if you have a core or you want to upgrade the fifth gear, you can get a Pro Street T5 built out the door for under two grand. So what the hell are you waiting for, man? Get a Pro Street. Now I always get this question, how much horsepower can it hold? There's many variables that go into rating the transmission. So, you know, we could start with how much the car weighs, what kind of tire you got on the car, what kind of clutch you got in the car, how do you drive your car, do you abuse it, do you just drive it like a grandma? Well, to be safe, you're looking at around 400 to 450. Now that's the safe level. Any type of abuse, whether it's bulletproof or not, it's gonna fail. I don't care how strong it is. If you go to the racetrack and you beat the shit out of it, it's gonna fail eventually. As I have somebody running 600 plus horsepower in this gearbox, but granted, they don't beat it up. I'm a Mustang guy myself. I wanna put the best parts in my Mustang that I can without breaking the bank. So I hope we're all clear now. I'm gonna stop talking and we can get into the good stuff. Well, if you saw my last video, hopefully now you are more familiar with the T5. I wanted to go through the sizes that you'll need to take this baby apart. So in the front here, you'll need a half inch or 13 millimeter. You'll need a 10 millimeter for the top bolts, a 15 millimeter for the tail housing, the case bolts, an 11 millimeter wrench for the speedometer, you cannot get a socket on there, so you'll definitely need a wrench. And usually these are half inch bolts. So after you take out the bolts, you're gonna to wanna to pry this off. The silicone kinda of holds it in. But you don't wanna go just prying anywhere. There's two reliefs. There's one right here and one on the other side. So you wanna start there and just pry so you don't ruin the mating surfaces. This slides off. Now there is a shim behind here. I always like to start out when I set up all the new bearings with that shim. So here we go, I just pop that out. There's the shim I was talking about. Now we can save the shim, set that aside, but this is all going in the trash. I'm not reusing this. 
I forgot to mention you will need a 7 8 wrench to get this switch off the top here. Now be careful when you pull this out because there should be a pin on the bottom side here. Get out. There we go. You don't want to lose that guy. 11 millimeter for the speedometer bolt. You guys don't have to kill this either if you're installing this. As you can see, the this is all smashed down. It doesn't have to be like that. Usually this, this section here is flat. I'm going to pop this off. Sometimes they can be a little stuck in there. That one came on nice and easy. There is an O-ring here. Rebuild kit comes with a new O-ring. I'm going to inspect the gear as well. That uh, one looks all chewed up. Maybe some debris got caught up on it and just ate it up. Just too much torque. Now, in order to get the input out, there's a cutout on the gear. I don't think you can see that there, but uh, you basically got to line it up for the relief. So what you want to do is pull and twist at the same time. Just pull very gently. I just felt it move, so it's going to come right out. There we go. Now, I don't know if you heard all the jingle and jangling, but that was all the little needle bearings. So those like to fall out inside the case, but that's a good note. When you pull that out, all these needles are going to want to fly everywhere. So just do it very slowly and take your time. We also, there's the fourth gear synchro. That is definitely worn the hell out. You can see the bottom level here, and then you go up here and it's it's gone so that's what it should look like and it's gone this has some miles on it and some abuse so now we're going to blast off these 15 mil case bolts get that tag first get yourself a set of matco swivel sockets i've had these for years abused the hell out of them and they're still like new so, if China ever made anything good, it was these sockets. Sometimes these can be a pain. Oh, well, that wasn't hard at all. Can't film it, but I'm going to drive this roll pin all the way down. So, you got your roll pin driven in there. You got all the case bolts out. You're going to want to put a drain pan on the floor and get this guy on the edge of the table because that happens every time. Once you break that seal, there's always a little bit of oil that comes out. So as you're jiggling this back, you're going to get to a point where this stops you. You kind of want to wiggle this a little bit and it'll pop off. Almost there. There we go. We got a spring here. That's going to come out. We got a ball. And we got a roll pin. Now, if you're doing this and you don't see a roll pin, you better check that you drive it all the way through because sometimes it'll get stuck in that hole right there. Always put a little pocket screwdriver in there just to double check that it, it's all the way out if you don't see it. If not, it's probably in one of the corners in there, and you'll fish it out later. It's a little pro tip there. Oh, it should slide right off now. Next, we got these uh, 10 millimeter bolts up here. So now that we got all the bolts out, just like the bearing retainer, there's reliefs on the corner here. So that's your pry point. There's one here, and there's one over here. So you don't ruin the mating surfaces to cause any leaks. So we're just going to pry. This one came up pretty easy. A little bit that way. Now to get this off, you don't want to pull straight up. You want to push away from yourself and then up. And the moment of truth. Look at that beautiful gear train. It 
So right off the bat, every one of these synchros is toast. So what I'm looking at here, you got your slider for the fork rides on. You got two forks, one for the one, two, first and second, third and fourth. As you're in the middle of shifting, the material on the synchronizer slows down the gear like a brake. You need to have, I believe spec is a minimum of 30 thousandths clearance between the synchronizer and the engagement teeth. When this slider gets close to the engagement teeth, the synchro should not be touching. And it is. So this was either on its last few shifts, third gear, the engagement teeth don't look banged up too bad. So there's probably just a hair left of material on that synchro. But on second gear, the engagement teeth are longer, but they're also hammered. You can immediately tell by looking at the engagement teeth that they're just flattened out, just getting hammered because the synchro, all that material is worn down that it can't properly do its job to slow down the gear and do a proper engagement for a gear change. The slider's banging up against that uh, the engagement teeth here, and just getting hammered. So this synchro is toast as well. First gear, doesn't look too bad. Normally I don't see bad first gears, but sometimes for those who like to downshift in the first gear, T5s don't like that at all. So please don't downshift in the first. But normally you engage first when you're at a stop or a couple miles an hour. So it's not taking the abuse like second, third, and fourth, or even fifth would on an upshift. So this is probably just worn down from time. Like I said, there's probably a bunch of miles on this transmission and it's definitely due for a rebuild. Let's get this main shaft out of the case. So it's normal for this to have some play here. What you do want to do when taking this off is put a socket under it or something because you're going to be driving that pin through and you don't want to be just driving it on the rail itself because there's nothing holding this up and you'll bend bend something or break that uh that tab there that engages the reverse lever so be very careful when you do that i always like to put a socket under there this is like a one inch socket 15, 16 socket, and uh, just to give it that support that it needs. So when you go hit this, it's not moving anywhere. This is taking a hit here. There we go. Pull pin. Next, we got a snap ring under here that we got to take off. And get my pliers. Go buy yourself a nice pair of uh, snap ring pliers. It'll save you hours of time. And make sure you got a pair of safety glasses because these snap rings like fly across the room. This can be a pain to get off sometimes. The rail likes to get stuck in here. So if you got a mallet, just kind of give it a little tap and then you got to kind of work it off a little bit on each side, back and forth, back and forth, and you'll eventually get it to come off. There we go. We got a uh, synchro back there for fifth. I just lay the whole assembly down, and the fifth will just slide right off there. And then your main shaft bearings race. Slide that off. Speedometer, you just want to push down on that clip. Again, you can use your mallet and just tap both sides and work it off while you're pressing down that clip. And this baby will slide right off. This is actually from the factory. They would ship these transmissions with oil in them. And this would sit here to help seal it. So when you go to put your drive shaft in, it would send this down the, the main shaft and then that's where it would sit. So you don't need this, you can just throw it out. 
So it can be a little tricky to get the main shaft out, especially with one hand. But you just want to push down on the uh, output there and kind of lift it up past the uh, reverse lever. And if I could do this one hand, kind of work it out the case. There we go. Now look at all that trash down there. Imagine if they didn't put a magnet at the bottom and you'd have all that material going through all your bearings. This would not last as long as it did if it wasn't for that magnet. Now if you listen closely, I'll put the microphone down there. So what happens is why it has that end play is they'll preload these bearings from the factory to spec. And what they later found out was this plate would stretch. So they'd have it all set up how they want it. And then a few miles down the road, this plate stretches and it can cause a whole bunch of damage and failures. So now they make a steel plate here. It's very thick and it does not stretch. That is like one of the best upgrades in this transmission that you can do. I put these upgraded plates even in my standard rebuilds. And then we'll take a T40 Torx. So what I like to do with these plates after I take them off, it's really simple, I'll show you. Let me just get that shim out of here. So I'll take it and I'll just sort of the standard transmission up like so. And we're gonna put a bearing splitter under here. And put that guy in the press. So now we got her all set up in the press here. So there we go. Now to get this guy out, it's pretty simple. Just pull it out a little bit, clear that bearing over on this side. So it comes right out. Even did it with one hand. Look at that. So next, we got to clean up that magnet, get all that debris off of there. We're going to have to punch out this uh, race that's in the case here. So we just take a hammer and lightly tap it, and it'll come right out. I'm going to leave this reverse idler in here because there's nothing wrong with it. No need to replace it. Um, but if you wanted to take that out, you would hammer out this roll pin. Then this would all slide out from here. And you could change that gear if you wanted to. But make sure when you put this roll pin back in, that the top of the pin sits flush with this piece of aluminum right here. You don't want to drive it too far. And we have to clean the top mating surfaces all the way around, as well as the tail housing surface to the case, as well as the front input bearing retainer. All right, guys, so we're going to tear apart the main shaft. I just wanted to give you a quick understanding on sort of how these synchros work. So, like I mentioned before, it kind of acts like a brake. It might be hard to tell, but that's the gear. It's just free spinning. Now, watch the gear when I put a little pressure on the slider. I'm, I'm trying to turn the gear now with my, my finger, but it's really tough. Now, if I release it, it's very easy. Once you put a little pressure on that synchro, it slows down the cone, and you engage into the gear. So with second, it might be a little different because that one's hammered. You know, the synchro is definitely gone on that one. So we're spinning it, right? See, that one's, that one's easier to spin. I'm applying pressure on the slider here. And it's easier to spin than the third gear, so that just goes to show that there's very little material left on that Syngro, if any at all. 
Now, when we tear this apart, we'll get a good look at it and uh, we'll see what it looks like. So again, it's free spinning. It's got that little bit of coasting after I let go. So that's the synchro in action. So hopefully that gives you an idea how it works, but I'll break it down a little better and uh, try to give you a little more detail. So normally this will slide off, but sometimes they've been on there a while, it won't come off as a complete assembly. So we'll have to get a three jaw puller on the inner hub and pull her off. I'm almost there, it's getting easier. There we go. Uh, take the synchro comes off. The gear should pull right off. Inner needle bearing and a spacer. So let me show you the synchro here. And this is just right up against the teeth. Now if I take a good synchro, and you'll see the difference. You see how we have that gap? That's what you want. It means there's enough material on there for the synchro to properly slow down the gear. The material's all in there, but it's just worn. It's worn too far. It's a good idea to lay out all your parts in the order that you took them off. If this is the first time you're doing it, good practice. You got a uh, inner snap ring you have to take off here. I know I've said this before, but please, I'm going to put on safety glasses for you. These snap rings, if you lose them in the pliers, that thing's going to go flying across the room. You won't even know where it goes. Sometimes they can be stuck in here. So if there's a lot of load back and forth over time with the transmission, it can really wedge these into place. Struggles. There we go. Man, that one is... Really on there. Then you got a thrust washer. And your second gear will come off. And another one of those inner bearings. Another small spacer. And then we have a spiral lock. The best tool to use that I prefer is a pocket screwdriver. So you'll see that edge right there. That's where we're going to dig in to pry this out. Pocket screwdriver, one of my favorite tools. So you want to get into this edge right here. Dig out and under, and it'll pop right up. I always like to keep one finger on it. You kind of got to work it around, and it'll free itself. It's always good to pull this up as far as you can. That'll help you get it out as you're working it around. I don't know if you can see on camera, you see that little splinter there? Be careful with those. Those don't feel too good when they get in your finger. There we go, popped up. Spiral lock. If you're wearing gloves, it's good to change your gloves after doing that, just in case any of the metal splinters. I always like to take a magnet and uh, go fish in here, see what I can pick up. All right. Next, we got another thrust washer and the synchro assembly. Thrust washer and this synchro assembly, three piece design. Let's take a look at this because this is the second gear synchro. Nothing catastrophic or anything, no material missing. Unlike that fourth gear synchronizer, that was pretty beat up. But this is just worn down, normal wear. So with the one-two slider, there's a spring and key assembly in here. So when you pull this off, the springs might go flying. So just be careful and kind of just hold it till you get to that point where they pop out. You heard that. So there they go. One's falling right there. There we go. Got a spring in here on some of these early T5 main shafts. 
They put a ball under the one, two slider and a spring. Don't want to lose these. I wanted to take a second and show you guys uh, why the teeth on second gear are all rounded. Once the material wears out on the synchro, the only thing slowing that gear down is the slider. You'll see that it's all chipped, all these teeth. Because once that synchro is done, this slider is just hammering onto the gear. So this slider is just hammering the engagement teeth. And that's what's causing the rounded edge. All of my rebuilds, I replaced this slider. Even if a couple of these teeth are bad, it'll make the shifting a little rougher. So I always replace it. I'll show you what a new one looks like. Now you can tell right off the bat, you got a nice pointed edge there compared to that roundness. I just went ahead and flipped around the main shaft. We have one snap ring that we need to take off for the fifth gear before we press it off. These can get jammed up in there too sometimes. But this one seems to be free like it should. There we go. Got her loaded up in the press. It's going nice and easy here. There we go. We'll do it right with the press. Carefully take it out. Now these will just come right off. Got the fifth. Got your bearing. First gear. Another needle bearing. Inner race, I guess we could call it. Inner cone for the synchro. The rest of the synchro. And we have a pin in here. We'll take out with a magnet. And then the spring inside. Remember we had the spring that popped out on the other side, so we still have it on the inside here. And that's it. Completely disassembled main shaft. So now I'm going to just take some scotch Bright, polish this up a little bit. It's This is actually very good condition. It's properly lubricated. It was never overheated or ran low on oil, which is great. A lot of times people whack this with a hammer because they can't get off that 3-4 slider that we pulled off with the puller. That looks good. Well, guys, here's all the beautiful parts that are going into this transmission. I just wanted to take a minute and showcase everything. There's nothing like getting some fresh parts. We got all our bearings here. Nice quality Koyo bearings. We got our small parts kit, all the snap rings, a nice shim kit in there. We have our our new counter plate. We got our springs and keys right here. You remember one of those keys was broken. A brand new set. New rear and front seals. More small parts. We won't be using these plastic bushings. We'll be using these nice bronze pads that won't break like the plastic ones do. We got these beautiful carbon line synchronizers. Check these babies out. Looking good. This is for third and fourth gear. And even fifth, it's got the nice carbon on there. And then we have the Z-Spec 295 505 speeds pro street gear set nothing like some quality parts especially nowadays so we got fourth gear here our input shaft 
We got third gear, second gear. I'll check out these teeth compared to the old second gear and they were just hammered. It's got a nice point definition on it, nice and tall engagement teeth. Beautiful. And first gear here, nice deburring on the edges. Nice counter gear or cluster gear. I'm gonna press on those bearings. And then we got our fifth. So I always offer two options for fifth. This is a 0.80 overdrive gear, and this is the stock 068 gear. So if you want like a nice highway cruise gear, just keep the stock gear. So that's gonna wrap it up for this one, guys. I hope you learned something. Tune in for the next video, part two. We'll be making this plain old T5 and moving it up to Pro Street specs. And man, why wouldn't you wanna put these beautiful parts in your gearbox? I mean, it's a no brainer if you ask me. I really appreciate all the support guys. Subscribe if you haven't already. There'll be plenty of videos to come. I'm just getting started here. So thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Later.